The 2000s era of R&B and soul music introduced us to a great amount of talent. The new millennium switched up the beats and created new fashion trends. All of the artists were giving us breakup anthems and club anthems, but a lot of them weren't able to replicate the success they had and eventually disappeared from the spotlight. Here's what happened to some of the female R&B singers from the 2000s that disappeared. Brooklyn singer Sharissa came onto the scene in 2002 with her critically acclaimed album, No Half Steppin'. Her single, Any Other Night, was a hit on R&B stations and reached number 23 on the R&B and Hip Hop Airplay chart and number 23 on the Hot R&B and Hip Hop Songs chart. Any other night, you would have been somewhere with your friend. The second single, which was the title track, was also an R&B hit. Years before her solo career, Sharissa was a part of a girl group named Forecast, and their song, I Tried, reached number 46 on the R&B and hip hop chart in October 1998. After the group, she worked as a backup singer for artists like Wyclef and Carl Thomas. In 2003, Sharissa recorded the song Take Me As I Am with Wyclef for the soundtrack to the romantic comedy film Love Actually. And in 2005, she released her sophomore album, Every Beat of My Heart. But the album was only released in Japan and didn't see much commercial success. Since then, she's kept a low profile for about 15 years, but recently she's been working on new music with her band with hopes to be back on stage soon. In 2001, North Carolina native Sunshine Anderson released the breakup anthem of the year titled, Heard It All Before. She described the track as the truth, talking about the tactics that men use. It peaked at number 18 on Billboard's Hot 100 and number 3 on the R&B chart. Her album, Your Woman, reached number 5 on Billboard's 200 and was certified gold that year. At the time of her success, she was managed by Grammy Award-winning singer Macy Gray and her partner Kobe Wu for Scam Inc. In 2004, she signed with Matthew Knowles Music World Entertainment and in late 2006, she released the lead single, Something I Want to Give You, for her sophomore album, Sunshine at Midnight, that was released in 2007. The single didn't chart on Billboard's Hot 100 and stalled at number 80 on the R&B chart, while the album only reached number 86 on Billboard's 200. Sunshine released her third studio album, The Sun Shines Again, in 2010, and it peaked at number 50 on the R&B album chart. In 2019, she released a new single titled Level Up. Today, Sunshine continues to do shows around the country, and she's focused on being a mother to her daughter. Two thousand one was full of timeless R and B hits, and Blue Cantrell contributed to them with her song "Hit 'Em Up Style." Oops! It was released that April, and by July, it had reached number two on Billboard's Hot 100, behind Usher's "You Remind Me." Her debut album, So Blue, sold over 600,000 copies in the U.S. The song was written and produced by Dallas Austin and is all about women's revenge on unfaithful men. The song earned her two Grammy nominations for Best Female R&B Vocal Performance and for Best R&B Song in 2003. And that year, she released her second single, Breathe, featuring Sean Paul, and her sophomore album, Bittersweet. Be 
Both failed to see the same success as her first single and album, but the album did earn her a Grammy Award nomination for Best R&B Album in 2004. In 2005, her recording deal ended and she opted to not re-sign with the label, so she started touring as an independent artist. For years, Blue was MIA until 2014 when she made headlines for an incident. According to TMZ, she went running through the streets of Santa Monica, California, screaming that people were trying to poison her with gas. When the cops arrived, she played the Do You Know Who I Am card and also referred to herself as a one-hit wonder. Cops transported her to a nearby hospital for psychological evaluation, but there was never any update on the situation or about her mental health. In 2016, she told Fuse that she's working on new music, but she has yet to release any music since 2003. Today, she do gigs here and there, and Hit'em Up Style can be heard in Bud Light's Limerita commercial. Amanda Perez is a Mexican-American singer from Indiana. She released her debut album, Where You At, in 2002 through an independent label. The album included the singles Never and Angel, but the songs went unnoticed since it was independently released. In 2003, she signed a record deal with Virgin Records and re-released the album with the new name Angel. The title track Angel became her most popular hit and reached the top 20 on Billboard. God sent me an angel from the heavens above. Although Angel was a major hit, her other single, Never, charted higher and reached number 10 on Billboard's Hot 100. Amanda released three albums over the next 10 years, but none of them or the singles received the commercial success that Angel did. She still continues to do performances and tour around the country. And in 2019, Amanda announced that her wife Anna gave birth to their first child. In 2002, the song Addictive by singer Truth Hurts shot to the top 10 and became an R&B hit that year. Addictive samples a 1981 Hindi song from an Indian film. He me down. He built me up. Hey. My pages. Truth Hurts started off as a songwriter, then signed to Dr. Dre's Aftermath label in the year 2000. In 2001, she contributed vocals to the Busta Rhymes hit Break Your Neck. Her debut album, Truthfully Speaking, featuring Addictive, was released the summer of 2002. On September 12, 2002, the composer of the sampled song and the copyright holders filed a $500 million lawsuit against Dr. Dre, his Aftermath record label, and parent company Interscope slash Universal Music Group, citing uncredited and unlicensed use of the Hindi song and filed an injunction to prevent further performances or broadcasts of Addictive. By that time, her album had already sold 273,000 copies. In 2003, a judge ruled that Addictive must be removed from shelves unless the composer Bapi Lahiri's name is added to the credits. Truth Hurts made the decision to part ways with the label as she did not know what the outcome would be. That same year, she signed with Raphael Sadiq's label Pookie Entertainment and did background vocals on albums by Jay-Z and Eve. In 2004, she released her second album, Ready Now, but it saw no commercial success and only reached number 173 on Billboard's 200 Albums chart. She would eventually disappear from the spotlight until 2016 when she went viral with a surprise bus performance of her song Addictive. And since then, she's been releasing music independently. Let me know about some other one-hit wonders that you guys are curious about. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and subscribe to Black Femininity TV for more content.